you've got your hurdler selected, you've taught them the technique, you've got your practices going every week, but what's your plan to get them better and better as the season goes on? Didn't think about that, did you? Well, I've got a plan for you. Getting your athletes from proficient to really competitive at the end of the season doesn't happen on its own. You have to train them differently. You have to take them through different stages in order to get them there. I recommend dividing your season into three parts for returning athletes and four parts for beginners. For the beginners, the first part is actually learning to hurdle. For everyone else, I recommend dividing the season into thirds. At the beginning of the season, you work on endurance. In the middle, you work on speed endurance, and then you finish it off with top-end speed. Keep in mind that technique is still something you're going to work on all the time throughout the entire season. For the endurance phase, the goal is to work on their fitness and also their technique without them getting injured. You should do a lot of high volume and low intensity work, meaning lots of hurdles that are lower and spaced much closer than race spacing. The athletes won't be running full speed over them, but their rest periods should be short so they're not fully recovered when they start the next repetition. This applies to both sprint hurdles and distance hurdles. Once they're in pretty good shape, you can transfer into the next phase of the season, which is speed endurance. This is training the hurdlers faster at race pace, but building in a component of endurance. This means that the height of the hurdles at practice is going to be one click down or three inches lower than they race, and the spacing is going to be about one foot shorter than what they race at. You'll do full speed repetitions with extended endurance at the end. This way, you don't let the fatigue mess with their steps and technique. When you reach the last third of the season and the athletes are in really good shape and they can hold their speed longer, it's time to sharpen the saw. The focus here is top speed and mental focus. The hurdle should either be at or really close to regulation height, and the spacing between the hurdles should be about six inches less. You're going to be doing full speed repetitions with long rest periods between each so the athletes are fresh for each repetition. You should have the athletes work on visualizing races to capture some of the intensity. If you haven't already been doing this, having the athletes race each other is a good idea. If you'd like to see some examples of what I'm talking about, in my next two videos I'm going to cover that. I'm going to do one on the 300 hurdles and the other on the 100 and 110 meter hurdles. Coaches, if you've made it this far through my coaching series, kudos to you. That means you're super dedicated, and I want to show you three ways that I can help you even more. First is with my hurdle training plan. It's a full season plan that walks you step by step through the season with all the workouts that you need. Second is my ACE coach subscription where we can team up for the season and I can provide workouts, video reviews of your athletes with suggestions, and also I'll be available for any advice you need. Third is with my new learning community I'm calling Team Ace. It's the most cost-effective way to work with me for what I just mentioned. I'll leave links for all of these in the notes below. And as always, if you want to learn more about hurdling and coaching hurdling, you can check out my website at acemethodcoaching.com.